Well, I went to town to get some flex plate bolts and these are the wrong ones. They're, what they are is they're flywheel bolts. Now the difference between a flex plate and a flywheel is the flywheel is thicker and it has a clutch that goes against this part so it's going to be a goodly bit thicker. Uh, and I noticed, I thought, boy, those bolts look a little long. And if you look through the back of here, you can see where that bolt comes through and it's literally hitting the back of the block. Uh, actually, I think it might be hitting the back of the crankshaft. So, um, them ain't gonna work. However, I can order some. I, I was really surprised that National Auto Parts had these in stock, uh, even though they're not the right ones. You know, these are, these are fine threaded bolts and and they're also they have a shorter head than I'm trying to think how I can make these work because what I was thinking I could do and I still think I can I can put these on with some watt water with some washers so that they don't touch the engine and I can use them under there and then I can order me some uh, bolts some flex plate bolts to go in this but I think I can still use these because what I want to do is put these on that and then put that engine mount thing on that and then use this engine mount thing to sit on the back of here to hold the back of the engine let me let me do some looking to see what I've got for washers if I can find well I got a bunch of these but I'm probably gonna I'm probably going to need these on my engines. Let me go look and see what I got. Thanks once again to Eric Polston. I have some biggish lock washers, and they may be big enough for these to snug down um, without letting those bolts come all the way through and hit the back of the motor. I'm going to try putting one in here, and we'll see about that. I might turn this air compressor back on. Now keep in mind this is just temp temporary. I'll put different bolts on that. <laughs> situation where the high wheel is on it and the engine should turn clear cleanly without anything touching. I should be able to tell that by turning the engine over by that 5 8 inch bolt on the front of the engine and a pretty good size socket. Let's find me a 5 8 and we'll spin that engine over. The reason that this matters, the reason I'm doing all this is because I want to be able to spin it over with a starter, which will let me, uh, you know, spin the motor over, check the oil pressure, crank it eventually, and do all those, do all those important things. Uh, I may have to buy some more tools. I've got some sockets here, but I, I don't really have all of my good sockets down here and uh, Jerry was talking about having too many tools and maybe needing to sell some the other day I might wind up having to talk to him about buying some uh, some decent tools from him this one is a craftsman some of mine are some of mine aren't some of them are cheapo El Cheapo tools which are uh, not really that great. If you're going to do any kind of serious engine work, you will need some real tools. So I may wind up having to having to talk to Jerry about getting some real tools from him. Maybe I get enough traction on that engine, and maybe it'll spin freely enough for me to turn it with with this. I might need to put a piece of pipe over the end of it. It takes a pretty good bit. Another way to turn it, but it's pretty slow, is to take a screwdriver and turn it a tooth at a time. Like, I'll go ahead and show you. 
like you can you can take a screwdriver put it right here and turn your motor like that slow but you can do it and even just turning it that much tells me that this motor is loose now what I'm going to be doing is I've got a, a starter I got one of those little mini starters right here that I can put on this and then we can spin that motor over with the mini starter that's uh but before I get into that all I want to do with this is make sure that this fit here because see I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this is a piece of an old engine stand I'm gonna cut it and fix it where I can mount it here and what I might do is cut it in such a way that I can use this bottom piece this is uh, engineering on the on the fly because here the bottom piece would fit on like this so if I shorten the distance between here and there this piece could sit at the right place to fit right onto that. Now what would be even cooler, I doubt if I got anything I can do it with, but if I had something that this piece would slide over and then I could adjust it up and down, but I don't probably need to adjust it, to be honest with you. If it sits there, that's gonna be good enough. Uh, so that's one thing that I'm, that'll, that'll take care of the back of the motor. At the front of the motor, I'm probably gonna come out with a piece of steel right to here and then up to this mount right here um, I think I ought to take this thing here Bobby says that's an air cleaner right here but I think I need to take it off get it out of my way it looks like it's welded on there maybe but I might can still cut it off Cut it right back in there. These are both Stuart Warner gauges, which I'm, I'm kind of tickled about. And this is a bolt meter, which is good. I like to have a bolt meter on my cars. And this is a temperature jet gauge. It's a, it's actually, oh, they cut the, they cut the wire on that. And that ruined it. Never mind. It's a good Stuart Warner gauge, but when they cut that wire, it ain't never going to work again. But I can got, I got gauges. I can put gauges on there. And I do want to have gauges on there so I, so that I can run this and get it up to temperature and and everything. That's a pretty good start on a day today. I hadn't had any lunch yet, so I'm gonna go grab something to eat and then uh, we'll think about this some more. <laughs> 